Google wants us to do less to do more with Gemini on Chromebook Plus. That was the strap line from the second Google Chromebook showcase of 2024, as you can see here in this video from the Chromebook channel. As you're watching this at the start of October, Chrome OS 129 is due to start rolling out, and it comes with a number of new features that I'm going to tell you about in this video. I also have updates on the new Chromebook and Chromebook Plus hardware that's about to launch, so Let's take a look. Starting with regular Chromebooks, there's some good news. You're going to get the Gemini app pinned to the shelf, just like Chromebook Plus models have seen. In addition, with new Chromebook purchases, you'll see a Chromebook perk offer for three months of Gemini Advance for free. That means you'll get Gemini in your Gmail and Docs, for example. To be honest, those are the places I find it most useful. New owners of Chromebook Plus models will continue to see the 12 month perk. Back at the end of May in my Chromebook showcase video, I showed you some features in development that I had demo to me by the Chromebook team, and now it's great to see they're releasing in Chrome OS 129. I'll show you how these are looking now through a combination of Google's marketing mockups and my use of the Chrome OS 129 beta. Coming to all Chromebooks first, we have the welcome recap. If like me, you sometimes forget where you left off with things, then this is a really nice visual way to give you an overview when you log back into your Chromebook. You'll get prompted and can decide if it always shows or asks you every time. Next, you're going to see the focus option by clicking down by the clock. Turning on focus mode should help minimize distractions. I like the way it integrates with your tasks and some music options. Moving to Chromebook Plus, you should notice a number of updates. There was wording to the effect of the up updates coming throughout October, so perhaps some will be spread between Chrome OS 129 and 130, or updates that are controlled independent of full releases. In May we saw the Help Me Write functionality, and Help Me Read was mentioned as something for the future, and it's now coming to Chromebook Plus models to summarise web pages, PDFs and so on. There's a new recorder app too that looks like it'll be really useful for tasks like transcribing in meetings, as it should identify multiple speakers. The mock-up shown from Google looks pretty nice. The version I'm seeing in the dev channel on Chrome OS 130 here, as you can see, looks a little bit more basic. It'd be nice if something like this might come to regular Chromebooks in the future too. Live Translate is another new AI feature that will integrate with meeting apps like Zoom and Google Meet, or even YouTube live streams with the ability to translate on the fly between over a hundred languages. Related to video calls, there are more audio and video improvements for Chromebook Plus. There's a new studio style mic to further improve audio, a new camera framing option, as well as the appearance effects, which is the new home for the improved lighting toggle. And there's also a portrait touch-up toggle, which I imagine is some sort of filter to make you look your best on on camera. This is another one where I'm seeing the functionality in the dev channel as I put this video together. Moving on to the hardware that's about to launch this month in the US and follow on elsewhere including the UK. First we've got this, it's the new Lenovo Duet 11. An update to the trusty detachable formula that Lenovo has delivered on before. This one is an 11 inch device with a 2K resolution display with up to 400 nits of brightness. It's powered by the MediaTek Companio 838 with specs of up to 8 gigs of RAM and and 128 gigs of storage. The case has been upgraded, it looks like it's set up well for vertical and horizontal use, and palm rejection of the screen is now stated to have accuracy of 99.7%. Starting price for the UK was mentioned as £349, but that's an option without the stylus, and I'd imagine it would come with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. In the US via Lenovo's website, you should see an option at $340 for a 4GB of RAM with 64GB of storage option, but that does come with the USI pen, or double the RAM to 8GB and storage to 128GB still with the pen for $390. Also later in the month there will be a Chromebook perk for 3 months free of good notes for all stylus enabled Chromebooks just like this duet. To me, this new Duet looks great, and after all the success Lenovo have had with the original Duet 3 and the more premium Duet 5, as well as the specs and design we've seen here, this looks to be set up to be a great device. Hopefully I'll get hold of one to show on the channel, and as soon as I see availability in the UK, I'll post to X and Threads. Next up, we've got Samsung debuting their first ever Chromebook Plus model, the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook Plus. This is a larger 15.6 inch Chromebook, and although it's larger, it's 
still the thinnest and lightest Chromebook Plus model to date. It only weighs 1.17 kg or about 2.58 pounds, which seems really impressive. Just for context, purely in terms of weight, if you think about this, the Acer Chromebook Plus 515, with the same screen size, when I reviewed this one on the channel, I weighed it in at 1.68 kg. That's about 3.71 pounds. So that makes the Samsung about 30% lighter. The color is called Neptune Blue, but it looks a bit more black in these shots, something I'd need to see in person. As mentioned, it's extremely thin too, at just 11.8 millimeters, and has an all metal chassis. So sounds really sleek in the construction and like it'll have the internal specs to match. Those include an Intel Core 3 100U Raptor Lake R processor, eight gig of RAM and 256 gig of storage. The 15.6 inch display is OLED and stated as having 400 nits of brightness, so it doesn't sound like there's any compromise there either. As if all of that spec isn't interesting enough, the keyboard has a few special things going on for it too, including three new keys. First is an accessibility key, which I think is this one up in the top row with the human icon, ready to bring up your Chromebook's accessibility controls. It's interesting to see the top function rows also look like they include the F1, F2, etc. labeling for the first time, or at least the first time I've seen on a Chromebook. Again, a little hard to tell here. The second key is a dictation key. Again, I think that's somewhere on the top row of function keys to allow you to easily switch to using your voice rather than typing. Third, and perhaps most interesting, the quick insert key. This is where the everything button, aka the launcher, usually is. So you'll be able to use this quick insert key to input in any text field. You'll pull up a menu showing a number of options at first, including things like emojis, recent URLs, and AI features like help me write. It's interesting for the first time on a Chromebook, again, as far as I'm aware, they've included the caps text for the caps lock function on that key too, even though you could always customize the old everything button slash launcher. And also don't worry, the launcher key is still on the keyboard. It's just down next to the touchpad. So I think it's here rebranded with the Google G. It was also mentioned that the quick insert key is an exclusive at the moment, but it will come to other Chromebook Plus models in the future. Existing Chromebook users should also be able to use the shortcut in the future of the everything button slash launcher plus the F key. I haven't seen that working yet though. And as for pricing, of course, it's going to be towards the higher end with this premium spec. The Samsung Galaxy Chromebook Plus is expected to start at £649. As a bonus, it sounds like the Acer Chromebook Plus Spin 514 should be on the way soon too. That one has been on Acer's website for a while and I also posted about it a while back. And of course, we've had the regular clamshell Chromebook Plus 514 already. So it'll be great to see this follow on. If you want to check out my video from the Chromebook Showcase back in May, previewing on the screen now, that's the video on the left for you to watch next. And otherwise, the algorithm thinks you should watch the video on the right. Do check the pinned comment for any updates or corrections to the news I've covered here. And as always, do let me know what you think in the comments. Cheers.